Hello, GVSU. My name is Caleb McCoy, uh, but my Dharma name is Tangjin Su. I'm a Dharma teacher at the Grand Rapids Buddhist Temple, which is located on Division Street. So I've been asked to share with you a little bit about a mindfulness technique that helps me in my own life. I'm a practicing Buddhist, uh, a Buddhist teacher. Specifically, you could say I'm a Mahayana Buddhist. I've uh, received teachings mostly in the tradition of Zen. However, however, I've also received teachings and practice within the tradition of Vajrayana as well, which many know as Tibetan Buddhism. However, it can be found in many tradition, many countries outside of Tibet. So I really think that in the Buddhist tradition, the mindfulness technique par excellence would be meditation. I mean, Buddhists have really, um, I'd say, we really take the cake when it comes to meditation practice because there isn't really a single um, Buddhist meditation practice, but rather a series of dozens of different methods used by different traditions, def different breath techniques or um, tools used. But the purpose, the aim, the uh, target for which we're all you know, uh, headed towards is very similar. We want to cultivate more awareness. We want to cultivate more compassion. Um, so I'd say the technique I'd like to share with you today is basically a simple breath meditation. Uh, if you start sitting uh, formally or informally with any kind of Buddhist group and any kind of Buddhist tradition, you'll probably receive instructions along these lines. Um, personally, I started uh, sitting, uh, doing formal sitting meditation when I was 19, I believe, 19 or 20. I used to attend a Zen temple in Chicago called Ancient Dragon Zen Gate, and that's where I learned how to sit Zazen. So um, Zazen, um, sometimes called Shikantaza, uh, is basically sitting meditation. And posture is, some, um, is important. I would suggest that you either sit on a pillow or a cushion. It can be a cushion like this. This is called a Zafu, but you don't have to you know, go out and drop 30 to 50 bucks on one of these. You can also just sit on a, a chair like I'm doing now, but the key is you find uh, whatever works well for your body and helps you feel comfortable. There are a variety of different postures and poses. I'm sure you've seen the expert meditator with their ankles up on both their thighs and what we would call complete or a full lotus posture. I am not that flexible, so I do what's known as half lotus. I'm able to get one of my feet uh, up onto my thigh, but then the other rests on the floor. If you're sitting in a chair, just make sure both of your feet are planted firmly on the floor, that your knees and legs form a nice 90 degree angle, that your um, core is strong. Even if you're sitting in a hard back chair, I would suggest you don't necessarily lean back against it, but that you, um, not flex your core as much as just um, use it, I suppose, to find a point of equilibrium between not leaning too far forward, not leaning too far back. Uh, the point is um, really posturally, whether we're sitting on a cushion or sitting in a chair, the focus of our um, physiological awareness is going to be our belly. In Zen, this is known as the hara. It's a point said to be three, sometimes they say four, uh, fingertips just beneath your belly button. Um, and I find that this posture when sitting in a chair works very well for being able to connect to that space in, in the body. Uh, as for your hands, the variety of things you can do. Um, generally, uh, in most meditation, you might begin with a bow and your hands might be in like a prayer mudra like this, but once a bell has been rung, formal meditation has begun, the hands go down to the lap and they can just rest on the knees, just facing down like this. Um, in Zen, it's very common to do what's known as the cosmic mudra, where the right hand 
is held in, uh, within the uh, left hand and then the thumbs touch. And then that just drops down right into your lap, uh, just underneath your, your belly, often resting on your pants. Uh, it helps if you're wearing very flowy uh, pants, uh, like you see um, Buddhist monks wear or um, robes, right? Um, uh, alternately, there's a variety of other postures, but just find what's comfortable for you and where you can rest your hands without um, really having to think too much about it. All right, so then once you have your legs where you want them to be, you're sitting upright, um, focus on your spine. The general uh, suggestion is to feel like there's an invisible cord touched, uh, tied to the top of your head, your crown right here, and like it's pulling you up. So if you can imagine with me that string pulling you up, your head's gonna tilt slightly downward and look toward the floor, but not all the way down here so that your chin's on your, on your chest. It's just slight. And there's a little bit of, a, I think, a misgiving in meditation that the eyes are completely closed. Typically they're slightly open, like the eyes are very heavily lidded. Um, and the gaze is directed, you could say a couple feet, if you're sitting on the floor, it'd be maybe three or four feet in front of you. If you're sitting on a chair, it's probably closer to five or six feet in front of you. But the eyes do not close entirely. They hang open slightly and the gaze comes down the face toward the floor. And at this point, we bring our attention to the breath. The Buddha said that his followers would be known for um, cultivating an awareness that I know that I'm breathing in, I know that I'm breathing out, or I am aware that I'm breathing in, I'm aware that I'm breathing out. And generally in breath meditation, that's the object of our awareness. We just want to come to an awareness of our breath as it enters and exits our body. It's not something we force, we don't overly exert our will on bringing in each inhale or forcefully exhaling, but we feel the air pass, you know, through our sinuses and down into our lungs, feel the belly swell a bit, and then relax as we exhale. So I look something like this. Generally the rate you breathe in sitting meditation is going to be a little bit slower, but if when you first sit down, you notice your breath is moving more quickly or that your heart rate is slightly elevated, that's okay. Don't force it to slow down. Just follow the breath until it does. Another misgiving about meditation is that um, we completely erase our minds or that we make it blank or that we cut off all thoughts from appearing, um, no, the thoughts continue to come and go, you know, whether the thought is I ought to scratch my leg or I need to buy eggs at the store later or um, I shouldn't have done that thing last night or whatever it is, right? The waterfall of thoughts does not cease. However, we don't get entangled with them. That's generally um, the approach or generally the strategy for coming into relationship with these thoughts as they appear. Uh, one metaphor that's often used is that thoughts are like clouds passing through the sky with the mind being the sky. As we sit in meditation, we see these clouds pass by, but we don't get entangled with them. We say, oh, look, that one looks like a sheep. That one looks like a fish. You know, we, we note it. Oh. I feel angry, perhaps, or I feel guilty, perhaps, or I feel a need to do things, perhaps, right? But um, we just see it for what it is, and we let it go, sometimes tying that to the exhale of the breath. If you, if you want to start sitting formally, make a habit of it, I highly recommend you use uh, a timer, which can just be a timer on your phone, uh, or an app. I really like Insight Timer, uh, which is an app you can find, I believe, in both the Apple and Google Play Store. 
but um, start small, three minutes, four minutes, five minutes, you know, don't uh, expect too much of yourself the same way if you're going to start working out, you're not going to do some super heavy reps right away, you know, try to be easy on yourself at first. Once you're done, you know, sitting for your three minute sit, once you've followed your breath in and out, um, once you've, you know, cultivated that spaciousness, that sense of um, healthy distance from your thoughts, let it go, you know, let set the practice down and come back to it again the next day. Uh, different thoughts will arise. You might feel different. The breath might feel different. The exhale might feel different. Um, but that's okay. We keep showing up day after day for the practice. And generally, over time, hopefully, uh, we may find ourselves out and about in the world in having moments where we come to an awareness of our breath. And we feel that same sense of spaciousness that we cultivate in meditation, but we feel it while we're at the grocery store, while we're in class, while we're driving our car. And perhaps in those moments, we, we're more mindful, less angry at the person who cut us off in traffic, um, less short uh, you know, or impatient right, when faced with a, a long line at the drive-thru or something like that. Um, but yeah, that's a short introduction to sitting practice. I hope you found this helpful. Once again, my name is uh, Caleb McCoy or Tongjin Su. Uh, if you're interested more in Buddhism or um, and especially sitting meditation, I highly recommend you check out the Grand Rapids Buddhist Temple. We're located on Division Street, just past uh, the Archdiocese, the big Catholic cathedral downtown. Anywho, thank you so much. I hope you found this helpful, and I uh, hope uh, this is a tool in your tool belt for culti cultivating more mindfulness in your own life. Thank you.